It's October 25th, 2021. This is Rook. As the population of Iranians skyrockets outside of Iran, and as English becomes increasingly established as the global language, the interest in learning to speak English has never been more profound. And that means the growth in popularity of educators who've become internet stars by teaching English on YouTube and Instagram and online platforms. Today, the hosts of Learning English with Sherry and Hushang Academy, based in Vancouver and Oklahoma, respectively, but followed by hundreds of thousands around the world join me to discuss all things persians teaching english in the 21st century this is conversations from to and about the iranian diaspora i'm Gian gomeshi this is rook Hi there, welcome to episode 152 of Rook. Nice to be talking to you. Hope you're keeping well wherever you are tuning in from around the world. Hello to you from Toronto, Canada. Salam Dustan Aziz, Dudud Bashama. The whole gang is here. Hi, the fabulous Keon. Hi, Gian. In your cola cap. Mm-hmm. In your baseball cap. Yes, thank you for clarifying. While I'm translating is. for, if it's the first time, <laughs> listeners may not know. Kola you Kap. should teach Persian. I, I, I'm going to get to that. I'm going to get to that. Hello, Captain Reza. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. <laughs> and hello, Groovy Shaya. Hi, Aziza. Hi, Aziza. How's your beard? Good. Persians teaching English. Turkish? Persian Turks. Persians teaching English, Keon. Yes. Yes. I've uh, I've had the opposite. Persians teaching Persian. Persian. <laughs> uh, but so about a year ago, I started noticing uh, among the people who were growing a big following mm-hmm. online, like in Instagram, you see these people like sometimes they're called influencers or they're called stars of the internet, whatever. I started noticing that some of these people are teaching English, at least in the Iranian sphere. Mm-hmm. They're Persians teaching English. Mm-hmm. And they're becoming huge internet stars. They're good at what they do, for sure, it's charismatic or interesting or have uh, interesting ways of coming at it. But there's also clearly an appetite. There's mm. clearly millions of Persians out there hungering to learn English mm. from these online platforms, from these people. So today we have Shahzad Kazemi who's uh, learning English with Sherry. She's got an interesting approach where she kind of, it almost seems like random idioms and words. She'll be like in the gym and she'll be like, this is the word for barbell, mm-hmm. you know, or, uh, and, uh, and, she, and she's very charming and kind of tells these stories. And then Husheng Nur Mohammadi, who is the, uh, the man behind the, uh, the channel Husheng Academy, and he, he teaches in a more, I'd say, uh, traditional linear way he's teaching English. Also very interesting, really smart guy, really. And they have massive followings. Makes sense. I mean, does uh, it make sense? Well, I was just in an Uber just now, and uh, a, a lovely Iranian woman who just uh, immigrated here like a few weeks ago, and she was trying to practice her English with me. Wow. And I actually she, told she her was about the driver today's episode. Or she, was, she was driving, uh, yeah. And yeah. I told her about today's episode. I was like, oh, you should listen in after uh, tonight's show. There's. Uh, Hushang Academy. So you think it's because there's this appetite, yeah. these online. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing is, is that you joked earlier about me, te- <laughs> me teaching <laughs> Persian, but I don't think that the opposite, I guess, because there isn't as much of an appetite to learn Farsi. <laughs> I, I don't see people with millions yeah. of followers on the, on the internet teaching uh, Persian. Yeah, probably three followers. Well, they're all in Persian <laughs> class. <laughs> there's, a, there's a whole class yeah. for it. No, but it's becoming, and I think COVID had a lot to do with it because before, at least, like, in, I know that in Iran, this is, this is especially, like, people would go to a uh, lot of, like, different English classes and stuff, and it's very popular. It's becoming more and more popular. But when COVID hit, it didn't, you didn't, well, all classes became online mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. and people like were looking for better sources to mm-hmm. learn better English. So it kind of it it, it it was fabulous because now you get to learn English from someone who lives in mm-hmm. a f- in, in in an English speaking country, learn like more updated idioms and uh, well, and they're and teaching so. in the vernacular to a certain extent. That's they're, te- right. they're teaching w- the way people speak to each other in the mm-hmm. street. It's not like when we were in grade eight doing French class and it was very regimented and mm-hmm. in, in Canada. But it, it's interesting to me because it's clearly not only folks who are have left Iran and want or need to learn how to speak English because they're in a new country mm. that's probably an English-speaking country or they want to learn the lingua franca. It's also people in Iran, like a big parts yeah. of, of the following that both Sherry, Sharzan, and, and Husheng have are in Iran. And you got to think that most of those people are not necessarily planning to leave Iran, but they just get that, you know, for all kinds of reasons, commerce or job opportunities or pop culture, you mm. know, that they want to learn English. Yeah. And that's evidenced by the fact that 35% of our audience, of Rook, I never expected this, are in Iran mm. uh, yeah. listening to an English show. Yeah. So all of that is it's a fascinating kind of um, culture that's developed around, you know, learning to speak English and becoming familiar with it, both in Iran and outside. Of Iran. Very, very true. And also, as you said, like it's it's not only commerce necessarily, but entertainment as well. They they like like the show Friends is massively popular in Iran. Really, hugely. Like it's just it's it's huge. Like and R I P Gunther. Uh, yes. Uh, Rest in oh, peace. Yeah, to oh, right? Yeah, he, 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 he just died. He just no died. Way. Yeah. 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 You didn't know that? No, I didn't know remember that. Remember Gunther? The, the, yeah, of the, course the, I remember. The, the yeah. bleach hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the yeah. coffee shop yeah, he guy. Just died. And he was like Aww, 59 was or something. Yeah, yeah. prostate oh, cancer. Oh. Uh, I, I was going to say that, yeah, so entertainment is very, like, it, 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 because Iran doesn't produce a lot of it national tv the, the state tv doesn't pr- produce very quality content so majority of the entertainment people receive is from outside like iranians who left are in exile or doesn't or produce very quality content <laughs> can <laughs> we get kushek academy to, <laughs> teach <us? laughs> <We need laughs> share, to share private lessons with sherry why don't you start following uh learning english with sherry uh, <laughs> how, did, how did you I learn I am, actually, actually. I'm, I'm curious now how did you learn how to speak english movies i watch tv and then but uh, you, pr- you got the I accent pretty Iran. well like yeah, you well, then, yeah. no, the later on when I moved to Canada because I wanted to act, I every every like when I would go to auditions, they'd be like, mm. "Yeah, can you do it without an accent?" <laughs> I'd be like, "I thought I did." <laughs> so, it wasn't, so then I yeah, I took so like uh, yeah, I got mm. a voice coach and. Act but you think is this a is this a a very new thing? I mean, I, I obviously I know. You know, relatives of mine back in the day mm. could speak English. Some of them who were in Iran, but but is it pretty new? Like even Shia, when you were there five years ago, mm-hmm. was there this appetite? Would people be listening to a show like Rook? Was there this like hunger to learn English the way there is now? Clearly, I, it's a, yes. Actually, it happened to me that I went to a like Gen Z party and they they were speaking English. What to, were you doing to in a Gen Z? I <laughs> <laughs> love it. Let's talk about that. Finding his new girlfriend. <laughs> Uh, so, so you, so you went to a Gen Z party, and, and what they happened? spoke English to each other. Well, Bessa you know? Bulur was making the case. Of course, he was saying this disparagingly, but he was saying that uh, a lot of English words are getting thrown into yeah. the sort of everyday Persian speak now, right? Yes, mm. yes. There's that too. And and also, as you said, the uh, language of internet is English. That's right. So you That's have right. to learn. So English. if you want to consume pop culture, if you want to consume the the new Avengers movie in its original language, mm-hmm. if you want to listen to you know um, uh, some big band, from, you know. Uh, on, uh, either English or Korean, mind you. <laughs> <laughs> Korean would help too because you could listen to BTS, watch Squid Game. <laughs> uh, I've I've been saying. I mean, you have Mandarin's the other language to learn. Mm. I mean, it's it's China century. I guess that's for sure. coming in like what yeah. a few maybe decade. I'd By the way, say. it's distracting it's when thing. Reza's speaking. Have, have you checked out Reza's hair? Uh. You're looking more and more like Jian every day. <laughs> oh my What's god, going on like here? dude, you straightened it and grew it in the front. <laughs> I mean, it's like the only thing I. have have is my hair <laughs> the only thing i have but left good. and and reza is you know what's uh, the problem yeah, i Imit- want that guy's hair I want, you know. <laughs> imitation is a form of flattery yeah, I so, I, so i would take it very yeah. uh, I'm, I'm, it's weird i did a double take <laughs> i was like what is i did who, too 
you I, know <laughs> i always try to adopt uh, a good quality of people oh. so yeah. this is the only thing good about you <laughs> <laughs> no, i'm joking, <laughs> <That's> I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. You. i agree my hair <laughs> is your uh, manner your uh, 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 we certainly haven't adopted the voice that's for sure <laughs> yeah or the grammar. i don't think i can adopt that but <laughs> hey a big shout out to kati kavandi immigration services inc hit it shia there you are oh Sponsor music. A big shout out to Kati Kavandi Immigration Services Inc. Kati Kavandi Immigration Services Inc. are certified by the Immigration Consultants of Canada Regulatory Council and deliver exceptional results on your uh, immigration application. Their firm has maintained exemplary standards of professional practice and will give you peace of mind. You can rely on them for advice and representation. Now, check this out Kati Kavandi Immigration have officially obtained agency for the American University of Antigua College of Medicine, the AUA, throughout Canada. This this university offers a medical program that serves international students who are inspired to become doctors in the US, Canada, UK, other countries, Keon, doctors. Usually, <laughs> you perk the up only money. kind of people I date. <laughs> That's right. You could... Uh, <laughs> and enables graduates to apply for residency and fellowship throughout these countries. And then what if, what if the doctor, by the way, if the doctor at one point gave up the practice, like he was like, you know what, honey, I'm becoming a guitarist. He still has the title. Oh, I see. Oh, oh. So she's, she's even thought of that eventuality. Right? <laughs> just like, oh, what would I do if he? Well, he's still got the title. Listen, it's for the, it's for my mom, you know. Uh, so, so the University of Antigua, focus, everybody. Gian, the University of Antigua offers a medical program that serves international students who are inspired to become doctors in the U.S., Canada, U.K., or other countries. Enables graduates to apply for residency and fellowship throughout these countries, then apply for permanent residency. I actually know someone who did this, who was a graduate of this university so uh it's a way to immigration and the, the folks who can help you figure all of this out kati kavandi immigration services go to kati.kavandi.immigration on instagram we'll put a link to that on all of our platforms thank you to kati.kavandi immigration did you guys see that uh well, I know, uh, Keon, have you seen that? Shy was showing me for you. You see that guy, uh, there's a video that's going around the last couple of days of uh, some parliament in Iran. Oh, or the, guy, the, guy, the guy's doing yeah. a speech in Azerbaijan. Yeah. And then another parliamentarian or something. Yeah, it was the introduction of the new governor of Azerbaijan, Sharqi. Right. <laughs> yeah, out of nowhere, another guy came oh on the stage. And Not just another guy. You said he's like a governor or so another He's a sepahi, actually. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. And he <laughs> came on stage and slapped him. <laughs> no, he hit him. He punched him. <laughs> no, he slapped him. No, no, and he was significantly was shorter, so he nonchalantly <laughs> walks on stage and leaps forward and slaps <laughs> this guy. Uh, but the thing, I mean, <laughs> we laugh, but <laughs> this is the problem. <laughs> These are quite they, I'm sorry, but this is people around the world see this. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then go, you know, look at these people. I mean, yeah. this is the, like, yeah. I, you know, I mean, obviously there's polarization and there's debate and the unethical behavior, whatever, in, in Canada and the United States amongst the political classes mm -hmm. and political leaders. But but this, you know, this thing of like a walk up to a guy and punch him and hit him and like make videos and, and you know, on on the stage. And it just, it's we embarrassing. donkeys running that country. Yeah. And you, you, have, you have a video evidence of it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think our international image was that guy's really main concern, <laughs> slapping the other guys. Yeah, clearly. No, but don't you think that's part of the problem? Of I course. mean, this is the, like it. Uh, we can't afford these things, yeah. that, you know, like this, e even if it doesn't happen very often and it looks like it does, but uh -huh. even when it doesn't, you sort of go, well, this is the type of thing that gets latched onto by yeah. people who want to, you know, continue to spread negative stereotypes and generalizations because it's true. Yeah. <laughs> because we're, we're yeah. acting like animals. Yeah. God. yeah not good animals. <laughs> good, uh, not like. No, not the friendly, not Oogie. <laughs> not Oogie. Oh, I wish they were Oogie. Uh, Zab so Zabuna. Zabunam lol. Zabunam lol. Duras jun. <laughs> What's the difference between Duras jun and Zabunam lol? Let's do some Persian teaching Persian here. You know what? Duras jun is far, f far from no death. Far from Duras death. Jun. Right? Duras, Duras. Yeah. 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 Zabunam lol means 
uh, my tongue should be taken away uh, for saying that. No, 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 you become no. mute. Like yeah. I, no, uh, I hope I like. Uh, I should be. Uh, I should lose be my ability to speak. To, yes. <laughs> wow, that's long. <laughs> yeah, it's always so. It's like it's so aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I would die. I would have lost. Even in <laughs> terms of endearments, <laughs> I eat your liver. I die for you. Uh, uh. So if I uh, if I say something like oh uh, um, if Ugi dies and to, and I say should I say Duras Junior is that when I'm lol what's the what's the okay, if, line between if you saying? are saying like Ugi you saying that Zabuna <laughs> Ugi's my French bulldog by the way <laughs> lovable French the mascot of yeah, you yeah. have to say Zabuna and lol I have to say Duras Junior. You know, ah. you are talking about Ugi. I'm not allowed to say Duras Juna to, to what yeah, I Yeah, you can say that too. Yeah. What if I both. what if I would say uh if Keon dies tomorrow? <laughs> 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 That's what I say. But there's also Khoda <laughs> Yeah, yeah so There's <laughs> Duras Jun, Khoda Nakune, Zabun Amal. And all the swear words yeah. Keon used after that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let, let's be clear. Like in Persian <laughs> class, I mean like yeah. Persian class, we learn all the, you know, the things that we're supposed to. But the first things you learn with, in any language is always the swear words. Yeah. Am I wrong? Well, I didn't because <laughs> I learned per, uh, Persian from my parents and from oh. Matt Muniz. But then with so I was like the one by the age of 20 when like other persons would meet me and they realize I don't know any swear words. Mm. <laughs> but like with your cousins and sister. I knew Hamas <laughs> Karanot. Hamas Karanot. <laughs> Maybe that might be a swear It's not a swear <laughs> word. Are you sure? No, no, no. <laughs> it's, it's the opposite of Zawud Amla. It's, uh, it's Ugi has won a prize. Hamas <laughs> Karanot. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so I say, if I say, uh, let's say Keon dies tomorrow. Then oh I God, should say Zabunam Lol. Uh, you know. Well, I'm trying <laughs> to do it. It's a thought you? experiment. <laughs> Zabunam Lol. And yeah. then she says, Dude, she can't true. say anything. I can't She's say not it. Saying. I have yeah. to she should accept say, it and die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to be taught off and say, I think I got it. I think I got it. So I can't say Zabunet Lol because that's that can be offensive too, right? Like if you say, oh, um, like Reza, like what if you die tomorrow? I can't be like Zabunet Lol, like, mm-hmm. uh, but because you might be offended, even though you're offending me by saying that I might die tomorrow. But I could say Duraz Jun. Durazun. About yourself? About yourself? Yeah, about what you said, about the comment you made. You're supposed no. to I stay humble. You say, and yeah, I don't, I don't think you can say anything. Mouth shut. No, 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 you say, uh, uh, no, <laughs> no. Here's the way Here's the way it plays out. Say say it about me. Okay. Say, <laughs> like, <laughs> it's, no, no, no. no, no say, <laughs> <laughs> what do I say? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> say, <laughs> say, Jian might die tomorrow. Uh, Jian might, uh, in Persian? Yeah, no, 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 in English. Okay. Jian might die tomorrow. Now you guys say all the things you have to say. Durazun. No, 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 Wait a minute. <laughs> you sold me out. <laughs> you sold me out. That was a setup. You walked right I thought you it, were bro. supposed to say, yes, maybe uh, I'll die. <laughs> These things happen. <laughs> Hopefully my death will not impact you <laughs> financially. Like, See, it's these pleasantries that I, I have no clue. I don't know how to do this. That's what I'm do getting. you? Listen, this is Persians teaching Persians. I'm, I'm trying to <laughs> teach Persians Persian. I'm trying to figure out exactly Exactly the difference between these things, so I know if Ugi's about to die, which one to use. Zabunam lol, duras jun, chodanakone. Chodanakone implies that you believe there's a god. Mm-hmm. Oh, so that's yeah. one thing. So for people that don't believe in God, <laughs> you can't use that. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think you would say Zabun the God's begging. I think you would accept it if I said yeah, if Shai is going to yeah. die tomorrow. Yeah, I love death. <laughs> <laughs> what a morbid show. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Shazan Khan. I mean, Hushanger. Like, what have we gotten ourselves into? We just wanted to teach some English. We wanted to do a community service. Hey, we're coming to you on rookmedia.com. It is there that you can link to all of our platforms. We're on an ongoing mission to build a new audiovisual encyclopedia of Iranian diaspora identity. We are on Spotify, SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, Instagram, and Castbox. If you like to see visuals with Rook, switch over to YouTube. 
And if you like our uh, your Rook descriptions and bulletins in English and in Persian, check us out on Telegram. It's always at, at Rook Media. Uh, and by the way, you can become a patron of our show by going to our website, rookmedia.com, where you can link to all things Rook, all of our previous episodes and guests. And just press the button that says support us. And for a small monthly amount, you can uh, continue things going here at Rook. And we really appreciate those who become patrons. Anywhere from $5 to $2.50 a month. Uh, we'll take we really appreciate it uh speaking of new projects we've got for, first of all I should, I should mention we haven't mentioned this yet but there's a new project we're working on with young kian nademi Ooh. Oh, she's busy at work you on wanna, that you want to reveal it no okay when you can't reveal it <laughs> okay. but but i know you're busy at work on it and i'm very excited about uh yeah. Yeah, what's happening uh can we say anything else can we say who else might be on it nope. or no no no, nope. it's oh. a huge secret. Um, Don't you we, can, we can say it has nothing to do with Zabune, Reza. Zabune, 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 All incorrect, but okay. Hold on, hold Just throwing a spaghetti at the wall, hoping <laughs> something sticks. Uh, but we have just launched our new series on Thursdays, the Contemporary History of Iran, uh, which we're getting a lot of feedback on, and uh, we every Thursday it's a a mission to look at the issues and the ideas and the events of modern Iran. Uh, trying to do this in a non-traditional way from different angles. Uh, we just had a, a great episode last week on um, Farah Diba and the rise of Iranian art, her role in the 1960s and 70s in, in bringing Iranian art to the fore. This week, how the Iran-Iraq war benefited Khomeini. Mm. It's going to be an wow. interesting. One. Yes. Interesting. Yes, and we've got a guy who knows his stuff on this. How the Iran Iraq war, but how Khomeini, you might even say, and the Khomeinists used the war to consolidate mm. power uh, in the Islamic Republic. That's the argument. That'll be on the show uh, this Thursday. The contemporary of Iran. I know we. Um, Two We've gotten a lot of letters about that. Uh, yeah, yeah, especially two weeks ago, we had the episode on uh, Mohammed Mossadegh and the 1953 coup. And a lot of people like wrote like paragraphs upon paragraphs yes. on just, you know, of information unloading of, and, you know, kind of arguing <laughs> things that were being said on that episode. So I guess it just depends on which books you've read and what your viewpoints are. Well, the are. episode just, was on the Americans yes. and the 53 coup, and it was That's with right. Stephen Kinzer, mm -hmm. who's written a book uh, particularly about the American role. Mm -hmm. um, um, but you're right. It inspired a lot of arguments. And I, I think we had a conversation before the show saying we don't want to do the injustice to these letters by chopping them up and editing yeah. them into three lines. That's right. But we, nor can we read pages Paragraphs. and pages of yeah, letters. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we invite people to go to our platforms, mm -hmm. right, and and read these letters. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, the bulk of them are on YouTube to be. Okay. Like, so yeah, the yeah. responses or agreement or whatever you'll see. Uh, but check out the contemporary history of Iran. Parts one, two, and three are already up across our platforms. Part four coming this Thursday. Shia, what happens if, uh, if Reza dies tomorrow? But uh, <laughs> what oh, took actually, a long time to yeah. say Zabunam Lol. <laughs> I know, I was a little, <laughs> I, I, I got to jump in with the Zabunam Lol a lot faster. <laughs> you got to lead with it. You got to open with Zabunam Lol. Guys, Zabunam Lol. Uh -huh. <laughs> what if Shia dies tomorrow? He's like, oh, I guess I got it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Oh, these pleasantries. I love the Persian language. <laughs> where, do, where do we get these from? <laughs> you know what? Pe you know what? People are loving the English language. Let's get to our our theme of the day: Persians teaching English. Captain Reza Gruby Shaya, the fabulous Kian see you on the other side. You know, it It wasn't always a truism, but in recent decades, you might say the 21st century, English has become the lingua franca of our world. And so if there was ever an incentive for Iranians in Iran and those who have moved outside of Iran to learn English, it's probably greater than ever. As such, it's no surprise that there's been a spate of popular new social media channels that feature basic English being taught to Persians. And today I'm going to be joined by two very popular Iranian teachers on Instagram and YouTube, one in Canada, one in the United States, who've made it their responsibility and business to teach English 
to the masses, particularly to Persians. In fact, in various ways, they see this as a chance to serve the broader community and help those who cannot afford English classes or fancy schools. You know, English has been called one of the most difficult languages to master, largely due to its unpredictable spelling, tricky grammar, pronunciation, etc. And we want to unpack the trend and the challenges of teaching to Iranians. So first, let's go to the United States. And an Iranian-American ESL teacher and founder of the popular Instagram and YouTube channel, Hushang underscore Academy. Hushang Nur Mohammadi was born in Tehran. He moved to the U.S. for study at the age of 18 after the Islamic Revolution. He was in the process of transferring from one college to another when the hostage crisis happened, and he was one of the unlucky Iranian students at that time who got a volunteer departure notice from the government. He ended up dealing with immigration services for four years, and that motivated him to become active in human rights issues. He started teaching English to refugees and immigrants in public libraries and in churches. Fast forward to four years ago, Hushang started the Hushang Academy page to teach the lingua franca to Iranians inside and outside of Iran. He believes English will remain the international language of the world and knowing English is essential in this century and right now. Hushang Nur Mohammadi joins me from Norman, Oklahoma today. Hello, sir. Hello, hello. Thank you, Gian. Thanks to Rook uh, Media for inviting me. It's a pleasure being here. It's a great pleasure to have you on the program. And and from that hotbed of Persians, Norman, Oklahoma, where <laughs> <laughs> the, the epicenter of the Persian diaspora, surely. Uh, are you the only Persian in town or are there some others? No, no. Actually, let me tell you, I'm sitting right now uh, on campus inside what is known as Farzana Hall. These are two Iranians who are uh, uh, graduated from the University of Oklahoma. Uh, they have the real estate company. They have uh, given $9 million to OU to start the Iranian studies, teach Persian, Iranian Persian Gulf studies. So, you know, other than Hushang, there is Mohammed and uh, Jalal Farzana. But uh, no, there are quite a few. There used to be quite a few Iranians here, but uh, a lot of them went east to east coast and west coast. But there's still quite a bit. I wouldn't say anything like California. But right. Well, you, you that, that was the appropriate response to my uh, uh, cheeky stereotyping of Oklahoma. It is much more diverse <laughs> than, than, and that's egg on my face. Thanks for correcting me on that. You know, I, I want to talk to you about something I'm going to ask uh, Sherry about, too, in Vancouver when she's coming up. Uh, and, that, and that's about who the audience is and what you're seeing in terms of the trends around teaching English and what the challenges have been for you. But let me just start with you because there's a different dimension for you. Um, it seems this is very much about human rights and you might say paying it forward to a certain extent uh, uh, as the reasons behind why you do this work. Can you give us a brief background uh, as to why that is? Uh, yes, yes, I'll be glad to. Uh, just like you said in the introduction, I uh, I saw the raw face of being deported just out of nowhere because of the hostage crisis. This is after wanting to come to the U.S. from the age of 11 and wanting to come here, get my Ph.D., come back, go back and teach. But uh, when I had my problems with the Immigration Naturalization Service, after uh, the hostage crisis in Iran. And uh, there was a four year window that I had to maneuver and work around it and all those stuff. I eventually got married and, you know, started the American family and uh, became a resident, stayed here. But that kind of uh, showed me how people could be vulnerable. People, uh, I was lucky enough to have money to hire a lawyer to get out of myself out of the predicament. But then I realized that there are a lot of people who are not as lucky as I am, or as I was, then it just showed me that it's very interesting to, to be able to give back, to help others. And I thought at that time, the best way I could do this with my experience would be to volunteer at churches, public libraries, and teach English, uh, give back to the society that I live in. 
And fast forward to four or five years uh, ago, and I told myself, well, all this time I've been wanting to go back to Iran and teach. And what's the next best thing uh, I can do um, instead, instead of going physically being in Iran, was uh, to use social media and actually make English available to any Iranian that wants to learn it. So I started on Instagram and Telegram and uh, I've been fortunate enough to be able you know, teach 20 books and just post them uh, free of charge and um, any Iranian or for that matter, people from Afghanistan, as long as people can understand Farsi, um, can use it, go to my Telegram channel or join me on my Instagram lives and, you know, uh, learn English. So, uh, And you've obviously been very successful. You've got a big following. You, you know, Before I get into the content of the channel, I mean, uh, just to take a couple of steps back, when this element of paying it forward, I mean, you're clearly, it's important to you to to give back to the Iranian community, to those Iranians that, uh, in particularly, as you say, that, 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 that may not have the ability or the franchise to be able to um, afford English lessons or fancy schools or, or et cetera, et cetera. Uh, um, I, I, you know, it is interesting that you're so dedicated to teaching English and helping Iranians. I mean, uh, um, it, it's no surprise in the sense that our show is about talking to mostly people of Iranian descent in the in the diaspora. So, so we're used to hearing stories like this. But I always find it interesting. I mean, you've been in the United States for over forty years. You came as a teenager. You're in your early sixties. Undoubtedly, the majority of your life has been as an American. Um, why do you think you're so interested in still giving back to Iranians and doing it in Farsi, no less? Well, it's just that I've always had the passion for teaching and that's i sometimes uh, bring this up and tell the learners that are on my channel i say i was 11 years old i saved my pocket money and went and bought a dictionary i did not even know how to pronounce a dictionary i used to call it dictionary <laughs> but anyways my passion has always been uh, to teach and uh, uh, that has stayed with me and like I said, I knew I couldn't go back to Iran right now because of a host of reasons. So I thought, well, this is the way I can give back. Luckily, I've been here. I've worked with people from 60, 70 different countries. So all that experience, uh, myself learning English in Iran, going to one of the best academies in Iran at the time, Iran America Society, I thought I had plenty to offer. and. And the fact that Iran is uh, under sanctions and a lot of people, even if they have the money, they might not be in a place or a situation where they can go to good classes. Uh, so I thought I'd just give back. And it's just a passion has been there. So the work is not is not hard. Uh, I, what, what time I put in it, it's really rewarding. And I just love every minute of it. Hang on a second. So you you were just to recap. You were 11 years old. I'm guessing this is the early 70s in 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 yes. Tehran, and you're. <laughs> I don't want to call you a weirdo, but uh, you know the, the your your thing was to try and get a dictionary so that you could. I mean, what? Why were you interested in that? Well, because I think from age 11, I wanted to teach, and at the time, uh, I can I can say maybe. A host of reasons why I was thinking that I might be coming to the U.S., but all I knew is that I had to learn English, and when I finished high school, I would come to the U.S., get my Ph.D., get back, and I was a pretty good student, so so I knew everything could be done like that. My my son tells me, you have no shortage of self-confidence, Dad, <laughs> and laughs at me. So at 11, I knew I was going to come to the U.S., and that's probably why. By the way, I asked the question, but um, parenthetically, I, I uh, as my mother or sister would be able to tell you, from uh, probably from when I was about 10 years old, I had a dictionary 
uh, I had this big old dictionary that I would sleep with next to my bed so that I could learn. <laughs> I was always interested in words and, and uh, awesome. wordsmith. So that's why what you do, in fact, is so interesting to me because I, I um, yeah, I would spend each night or the, when I was in the morning reading the dictionary to learn new words, which was a bit of a liability as a teenager because <laughs> nobody likes a teenage kid who's using big words. So it was so yes. liberating for me when I got to university and, and then became a broadcaster that I could actually, for the first time, use bigger words. You know, it was uh, it was nice. Um, h- how do you so so? Let's get to the channel and and what you do with it and what you've learned from it. Uh, first of all, how do you decide what kind of material to post on your channel? I mean, you obviously um, want to teach people English, but you take a bit of a different tack from, say, Sherry, who we're going to be hearing from, who in many cases is teaching very basic words. Uh, you don't always do that. What you do is a little more involved. Can you explain how you've decided on your approach? Yeah, thank you for that question. I said to myself, Okay, Hussein, what what if you were living in a small town in Iran and let's say you fell into two categories. You fell into a category of a person who was lucky enough to have enough money and find a good teacher and go either take private lessons or go to class and sit there and learn from them. Or you were financially not there, not could not afford it. So what I did was I tried to find out what the best books are that are available in Iran and uh, English language institutes are using. And uh, I found a couple of grammar books. And there's a trend now, people who want to make fast money, they tell people you don't need to learn grammar, this and that. But I always say uh, my would-be learner let's say 17, 18 years old, and they're thinking of life in academia or getting a degree and going to work. They definitely need grammar. And then I did a couple of other books before I said, okay, I'm going to do a little bit more research and find out what book series are the hottest in Iran that are published by a very uh, good publisher, whether it's Cambridge, Oxford, whoever else, Random House, and most importantly, are available in Iran for people to purchase. So I did my research, and at the time, uh, the American English file books. So anybody who has access to those books and they can find them, they can just go on Telegram and listen to my audio files and um, uh, learn from them. I get the grammar part, but why, for example, is it important to you to teach American history? Oh, American history... Uh, U.S. history is extremely important to know for uh, our world because uh, the United States is kind of like a microcosm of the whole world. You've got people from all over the planet here. You had 13 colonies that became states, and they decided before going at each other's throats to uh, unite. And I think I'm, I might be a little... Uh, Pollyannish here. Some people say that, but I think in the probably three, four generations from now, not now, we're not ready for it now, but three, four generations from now, uh, the whole planet will come with the challenges we have. We'll come to a point that we'll have to unite in one form or another. And I think that's when we'll come to the U.S. history and uh, this country with 200 plus years of history how these states united, uh, what their challenges were, what their weaknesses are, uh, what the problems are, and what the good points are. I think U.S. history has a lot to offer, and that's why uh, part of my teaching is U.S. history. Interesting. Interesting. So, so I mean, as someone whose mother tongue is English, it doesn't really, uh, it's difficult for me to understand whether it is difficult to learn English or not, I understand that I'm told that it, it's not easy. What is the greatest challenge you've found in teaching English to Iranians? Uh, pronunciation is an issue. You know, in Farsi, we have one V, but in English, you've got V and W. So that's an issue. Uh, your S's, you know, long S, S-top, stand. Right. So you gotta you got to work on that. 
But uh, intonation is the most challenging part for them. And I, I tell them, I, I read all the texts and I try to do it with an intonation. And I say, guys, listen to this and try to read it out loud yourself and record it. I tell them that this is a challenge that I've seen not just with Iranians, but with a lot of language learners from all around the world. Explain what you what we mean by intonation. Intonation is is you know you don't want to sound uh, monotone. Mm. I went to school and it was interesting, and so there's no up and down in sound. It's not rhythmic, and it just kind of for the listener, it makes the listener just pretty much fall asleep, lose interest in listening to you. And I see that around, you know, graduate student here when uh, they are working with their uh, advisors, when their delivery is not good. The advisor literally, I've seen it right in front of my eyes that uh, the advisor loses interest uh, in listening to them. So I tell them uh, it's very important to uh, to have the right intonation. And one thing that is, um, this is, this is really, really unfortunate. And I, tell them without hurting anybody's feelings, especially some of these teachers that use uh, a couple of popular series in Iran, popular TV series to teach. Uh, I tell them, I say, when you get hooked on this uh, TV series, all you become familiar with or the sounds that become familiar to your ears is the six people episode after episode they are city folks, educated. Uh, they are uh, you. You become familiar to their to the tone of their voice, to how they say words and phrases, and you don't challenge yourself. Whereas, if you literally, I've taken uh, learners from all backgrounds. I've taken them to a body shop, to a mechanic, to even a place to buy phones. People with uh, a high TOEFL score, with a high IELTS score. They literally, they cannot understand uh, the person that's talking with them. It's because they've been listening to one or two <laughs> right. TV shows and that's all. They're stuck on that. So I tell them that's going to be your challenge. Don't, don't just watch one TV program, two TV programs. Watch many different things um, and other challenges. If you're going to go live in England and you know you're going to England, or Australia, stop watching American shows. Right, right, because right. You go there and you're totally, and it's happened because people join me from Australia in my life. They say, I'm, I've been here six months, a year, and I don't understand these people. I say, well, what are you listening to? What are you watching? Well, I'm watching such and such TV show right, from the right. U.S., Voice of America. I'm like, you're not in the, in the U.S. You're not here. So start watching Australian it's, it's such a it's uh, such an amazing point that I, I haven't thought a lot about which is that because we often say you know listen to watch watch American TV or something like that it'll help with your language but but you're right if you only watch friends um, you're gonna end up speaking English like Joey from friends or one of the characters right that, you're not gonna that's have this, right right it's how, really funny how did you know how did you know the six people I was talking to as friends <laughs> well exactly I mean well because it's a popular show for Iranians. And by the way, rest in peace, James Michael yeah. Tyler, uh, who played Gunter. But yeah, I don't want I don't want to bash it, but that is I've come across this problem so much. Literally, I've taken uh, hundreds of, uh, like I said, learners from all backgrounds: Iranians, Koreans, you name it, Chinese, Asian Americans of all backgrounds, and. They've watched Friends. They've watched this. But you take them to a, uh, you know, to get their phone or to uh, get some work done on their car. They just are totally at a loss. And these are people who've made seven point five, almost eight, at their, you know, in, a, in their IELTS exam. So you know they're they're okay. But so that's one of the challenges that right. I try to remind them. Um, one of the things that I try to do that's totally different from most pages that teach English is that anytime I come across something that I know it's an issue for a new arrival, I, I bring it up. 
we go through lessons. I say, guys, this is not used in the U.S. This is how we say it. If you say it like this, your average American might understand you, but they might just, uh, you know, just say, what the heck is this person talking mm-hmm. about? So I, I bring that angle to, to our conversation teaching. You know, it's it's a presumption of mine that I that I spoke to uh, spoke about in the introduction there that as I've been saying that that there would be more incentive now to learn English to be fluent in English um, because of the, the 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 growth of English as the lingua franca. Uh, mm-hmm. Have you noticed in your years an upswing in interest in learning English amongst Iranians? Wow. Do you have any data on that? I don't have a data because I don't think anybody has done a survey per se. But my feeling is that it's a major upswing. Everybody wants to learn it, uh, especially especially those college age students or those who uh, who have even finished school, but they know they're going to somehow try to uh, immigrate to the U.S., Canada, overseas even Europe to other countries, you know, language is not English, but they know that they have to know it because it gives them a, you know, gives them an advantage. So yes, there's a major, major demand for it. And, uh, and I'm, I'm just so lucky that I got into teaching it and these uh, social media platforms were, became available uh, when they did. I wanted to do it in 1998. I started doing it, uh, but back then the VHS tapes, I was like, you send this VHS tape to Iran a couple of times, if they copied a couple of times, this quality is totally gone. And then uh, when the digital format became available, uh, unfortunately, I didn't start at the very beginning of it. Mm-hmm. And even when I started my Instagram page, I did not tag my posts for a year year and a half but eventually wised up and uh, Mm -hmm. started uh, kind of spreading the word so the telegram channel uh, i've got four channel the academy has four channels and i'm i forgive me for using i i would like to use we but then i have to think of i myself and me the only people that run my page it's me and only me so I say I, I feel bad about it, but four channels and we've got over 40,000 subscribers that are using different books for different levels and Amazing. that's just taken off. And uh, Is the interest mostly, in, in terms of the audience in Iran, is it mostly in the big cities? I mean, I've been shocked, pleasantly surprised uh, in the year and you know four months that was since we've launched Rook I always hoped that there would be some audience in Iran but the fact that 35% of our audience is actually in Iran uh, has been I mean we're talking about thousands and thousands of, of folks uh, subscribers and 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 regular listeners um, has been a um, a pleasant surprise. I I assume, and our analytics tell us that they're in Tehran, they're in Shiraz, they're in the big cities. Um, do you find anything different? Are the folks who want to learn English located in those big cities, or are there oh. folks in small towns that are are, are tuning oh, into you as well? This is one of the most heartwarming things for what the academy is doing, and the best way I can find out is when I go live. I can ask them. Um, you know, the analytics will tell you, okay, Tehran, you know, they gives you the major numbers. But what I do is during lives, I just say, write down uh, where you're at right now. And it's unbelievable. Uh, I literally have people not at, with, with Instagram, you, you can have three people join you. Literally, I'll have somebody from Sistan, Baluchistan, somebody from Abadan, somebody from Azerbaijan, the next person is from Mashhad, the next person is from Kashan, hmm. Kerman, all over Iran. And when I ask them, they, a lot of them, um, small towns, small cities, they just pretty much join me. But uh, yes, majority, I would say, if you were to go with chunks, um, Tehran uh, is, uh, you got Tehran, Azerbaijan, Tabriz, Mashhad, um, 
Havaz Abadan, and the major cities, Isfahan, Shiraz, and then all around Iran from small towns. And what do the analytics tell you about the profile of these people? Are they generally young they people? Are they generally, generally are either young people or people that I'm guessing because they literally tell me when I talk with them uh, on the screen, um, a lot of them hesitate to say, which I honor that and respect that. I never ask them to, uh, to say something that they are not comfortable with. But a lot of them do say, I'm, I'm learning this language. I'm 40 years old. Um, I've got two kids and I want to uh, go to Canada, come to the U.S. if I can. And that's why I'm learning this language. Um, they just write up and tell me. But the majority of them are from ages uh, 16, 17 to 30. And, uh, and is the majority of your audience, Hussein, in Iran? 95% of them 95%. Are in Iran. Yes. You see, th this yes, is inter this is interesting to me, and this is something that I wanted to get to and and get your get your thoughts on because while we're seeing the rise in um, both interest and and actualization of of learning English in places like Iran uh, um, or specifically in Iran, I should say, there seems to be a paradox at work that is with Iranians outside of Iran, in that because of the exponential growth of the diaspora. As communities in the diaspora have grown, they are increasingly places um, like, for example, the northern part of Toronto, in which the Iranian community is so large and so widespread that new immigrants from Iran don't actually have a great incentive to learn English. You know, like you'll oh, find a you'll find a thirty year old I am who doesn't so glad you he doesn't even speak. You know, has been in Canada for five years and doesn't speak English very well. What is your take on that? Oh, I'm so glad you brought this up. I and I do and I do say this probably um, every third time, if not every second time I go live. Uh, and I bring an example. Again, I try to give myself as the example. I said, I said, guys, I went to Iran America Society, the best English language institute in Iran when I was in Iran before the revolution. There was also the British Consul sponsored one, but I say Iran America Society was best. I think it was if not the best, it was one of the top two. And I tell them when I came to the U.S. for an Iranian 43 years ago, before the age of cable TV, no internet, whatever, I said my English was really, really good. And I tell them, I say, it was only having been forced to get Iranian roommates after the revolution and having to work, whether it was as a dishwasher, a waiter, whatever. I said, I needed to have roommates. It was, I, t I tell them, I say, it took me two years to realize, wait a minute, we go to work, that's fine. A limited number of stuff that we talk about at work. Then we go to school, again, limited number of stuff, you know. Um, you learn your math, you learn your this and that, but and then you come home with your roommates and all you do is talk Farsi. And then it took me two years to realize, wait a minute, my English has not improved any. And then after that, it was because I got married, because I started working around Americans. And then uh, because of my interest in human rights, I started reading heavily magazines, journals, articles, this, that. So that's when I realized, oh my God, I knew English, but I didn't know English. So the very first thing I tell them, I say, and this is a double-edged sword, uh, WhatsApp, all these other platforms. You make it to the U.S., you make it to the Europe, and you're talking to your cousin, hey, how you doing? You're watching right. a TV program. Right. And before you know it, two, three, four years have passed, and you've pretty much talked to nobody from your host country. And you've watched all these excellent programmings on all these other TV channels in Farsi, and you, you've not improved your language. So I tell them, I say, please be mindful that do not put yourself in that place. Because I see right now, I see I'm, I'm around, I'm, I'm not 
so much in touch with them, but I, I'm around campus quite a bit. I see Indian students hanging out together. Yeah. I see Korean students hanging out together. I see Iranian students hanging out together. What so many, you know, there's not too many of them. And I tell them, I say, this works to your disadvantage because especially if you're going to stay here, um, knowing the language, knowing that some of the history of the country that is your host country will will open the doors for you like you won't believe. So right. I, I constantly remind them. And uh, sometimes I feel like I'm saying it too much, but then I have to remind myself there's so many new people and and also so many new people on on, on this page and then uh, on Telegram. And then also not everybody watched my last live or listened to the file that had right, to do with right. an advanced level. Right. So. But so, it, yes, it, it is it is counterintuitive to think that uh, you know a kid in Caramon has more incentive to learn English than one in the north of Toronto. You know, uh, but but it it does make sense in this. I mean, first of all, thirty years ago, here uh, I was here. Uh, you couldn't get by without learning English. That you you know you needed to learn English uh, to to be able to live, to be able to go to the store. You can now move to Toronto. Just go to Persian restaurants, just go to Persian supermarkets, uh, get a job with an engineering firm that's run by Persians, whatever it is. You have, there's really, as you say, talk to your friends on WhatsApp and back in Iran or whatever. Yeah. The incentive doesn't exist except for the fact that um, ultimately we won't make the kind of social or economic or political inroads into the broader community unless, you know, you speak, as you say, the dominant language of the of the host's country. So it's um, it becomes this insular bubble, um, which isn't helpful either. Uh, and, and so um, it, it's a very interesting phenomenon. I, I wanted to, as an English teacher, you know, uh, I, I sometimes I look at you and I think he's speaking Farsi. He seems to be speaking to people in Iran. Uh, you know, there's I can think of a bunch of people down the street who could who would take benefit from this, let alone yeah. in, in Iran, right? Yeah, and and because I do it for free, sometimes I'm not bashful about saying it because I, I want them to know that uh, and i again i go back to myself i say guys you have that ethical moral responsibility as a citizen um to to know the language and the culture and the history of the host country to the best of your ability and if you put yourself in a cocoon with your loved ones and not make yourself uncomfortable and uh, you know a bit uncomfortable to challenge yourself to learn the language, you will find out in 10, 20 years from now that you've shortchanged yourself. So I better say it now, hurt your feelings, because the person right. who's going to charge you and teach you, they're not going to usually tell you stuff that might hurt your feelings because uh, sure. they don't sure. want to lose you as a as a student. Well, as well, a well, well, let me ask you this, and I've just got a couple more questions before I let you go. But the, you've mentioned a couple of times now that you do this for free, and um, which is so selfless and so it's a very beautiful thing that because you really do put a lot of time and effort into this clearly um do you begrudge those who teach online and and uh, seek monetization no no not at all i always most of my lives if you uh if one listens to them or watches them or my telegram uh, most a lot of the stuff that i teach that are going to be units of the books uh, I put the audio on Telegram, and uh, uh, I always tell them, I say there's nothing that replaces a good teacher, nothing whatsoever. So I'd, not at all, if somebody has gone through, has put the time and effort to learn uh, something to be able to teach, share, make, make money off of it, and especially if they're passionate about it, why not? More power to them. I do not like it when I come across pages, and there are many of them, that uh, are obviously not fit to teach. And when they tell people, okay, we're going to um, help you get a, a IELTS score of seven point in three months, six months, then I know that there's, there, they're not being totally honest. And those, those upset me, but I don't actively go out and name names. I just feel like I have to uh, let the learners know that 
no, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be challenging. Don't fall for these uh, uh, for these promises. And uh, uh, so I I kind of remind them because I get a lot of direct messages that so and so promised me this never happened, right. and uh, and I just I just um, I say I'm sorry. I hope that my Telegram channel can help. And uh, do be careful next time you find a teacher. But no, I always tell them. I say there's no substitute for a good teacher. And, are you are you in touch? And, I mean, there are there are hundreds of people doing variations on what you do. Some of obviously not as as good as you do it. But but are are you in touch with them? Does it is it somehow um, competitive the space of teaching English uh, uh, to Iranians? No, no, it's it's not. I always uh, I always look at it like. If they're doing something really good, it just complements my work, or my work complements theirs as a resource. So it's I'm not in competition with anybody. You know, here pretty soon, uh, of what little money I put aside to do what I'm doing um, is going to run out, and maybe I'll ask for sponsors to help me or this or that. So I'm not in competition with anybody. I really actually honor the people who go out of their way to uh, to teach people and they're really good. And I tell them, you're doing a great job. I invite them to go live with me. Um, so it's not it's not a competition. I, uh, I just consider myself as an additional resource to what's out there, except I look at it like my work is I try to look at my work or try to make my work complete. I just don't go teaching words only or mm, phrases. Mm. I look at it like somebody who's in a small town who wants to learn English well enough to go take the TOEFL, take the IELTS with just a little extra work, regardless of where in Iran they live or where in Canada they are. So I I'll always look at it like an honor and a blessing of what I've been able to do and uh, I'm happy to see others do something like what I do and provide a resource for Iranians or people from Afghanistan, Tajikistan um, who want to learn English. So pretty soon I'll be I'll be probably asking people who are interested in helping me. But so far, it's been all the money I put aside working a few years back because I wanted to just do it uh, with no strings attached yeah. and uh, try to do a good job as much as possible and uh, do uh, what little I can for Iran and Iranians. That's a, a, a beautiful sentiment. It's really, really uh, nice to get to talk to you. I, I've been aware of you. I've been uh, watching you. And uh, I thank you so much for making the time and giving us a little slice of what you do. And I thank you so much for what you're doing, your team. Uh, uh, thank you so much. I've been going through and listening to the interviews you've done. They're awesome. Thank you so much for doing this. And we do need an encyclopedia, like you say, of uh, Iranian experiences in diaspora. And what you're doing is going to be lasting and have a lasting impact on the lives of Iranians who are going to be coming here or live uh, live outside of uh, U.S. and Canada or interested in learning about the experiences of, of Iranians all around the world, especially in Canada and the U.S. And I'm going to definitely let, uh, let the learners and subscribers know about Rook Media so that they can benefit from it in the future. Thank you so You're much. Very kind. Thank you so much, and uh, please stay in touch. Thank you. I will. I appreciate it. Khuda. Thanks for the opportunity. And uh, and I know I I, I, I know I got a place to crash in Oklahoma now. When I uh, you you you're not only <laughs> Oklahoma, but I'll be going back and forth to San Diego. The well, best even, part of the US. well, San Diego to get uh, I, that one. I got. I, I've been there. I love it, and I'll take you up on that any day because it's so beautiful. But Oklahoma is a new experience for me, so I've only been there yes, once. Yes, yes. So Oklahoma uh, I'll, I'll people are very up. friendly. It's uh, like like I tell people uh, uh, that are on my page. I I tell them about my first experience 
uh, in the U.S. I'm, I'm going to tell you this just so that we get a kick out of it. I tell them, guys, just because you've passed uh, and gone to a couple of classes, it doesn't mean you've learned English. My English was good, and I came to Oklahoma the first couple of days. People would walk me, walk by me and say, howdy. And I would look at him and say, my name is not Hadi. Why are they calling me Hadi? And I'd, I'd say, no, they're saying, howdy, how you doing? And that was the first thing that I had to experience. And the second experience was coming from the center of Tehran for 18 years of my life. I would say, where is everybody? Because almost 4 million people right. spread in a pretty big state. So it's not, it's, it's got plenty of elbow room. So Oklahoma is a good place if you want plenty of elbow room. Uh, Husheng John, or as I know you, Hadi John, uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you for this. Talk to you soon. Thank you so much. I appreciate the opportunity. Bye bye. What else? Hushang Nur Mohammadi, an Iranian American ESL teacher, founder of the popular Instagram and YouTube channel Hushang Academy. We reached Hushang in Norman, Oklahoma today. This episode of Rook is entitled Persians Teaching English. So we've heard the perspective from a veteran teacher in the United States. Now let's get the view from a very different voice based in Canada. Let's go to Vancouver, Canada. And my next guest is an Iranian ESL teacher and the person behind the popular Instagram page, Learning English with Sherry. In it, Shahzad Sherry Kazemi teaches English vocabulary, grammar, and correct pronunciation in a fun and very accessible way. Sherry was born and raised in Tehran. She got her BA in industrial engineering and obtained her master's degree in socioeconomic engineering. She worked as an economic journalist and a financial analyst, but says she always knew her passion is in teaching English. After being an English teacher for some time, Sherry decided four years ago to start working on her Instagram page, and it became an online hit. These days, she's busy creating content, running classes, collaborating with international schools. And right now, Shahzad Sherry Kazemi joins me from Vancouver today. Hello. Hi. Hello, lovelies. How are you? <laughs> you always start with hello, lovelies. When did, yeah. that, when did you come up with that? I don't know. I just love that phrase. Uh, you know, you have to have that some kind of a catchphrase that everyone clicks to it. So it was just, hello, lovelies. And it's so energetic, right? You have to assume that everyone in your audience is lovely. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> You've got over 223,000 followers on your Instagram channel alone. When, Sherry, when did you learn that teaching English online, albeit in a fun way, could be this popular? Um, you know, when I started my channel, I didn't think to be like a hit or something like that, but it was my passion. So when something is coming from your passion and your heart, I think people will receive it and will understand that it's coming from your passion. And you see that it's, I mean, the way that I teach is effortless, means that this is what I love and people get that, right? Well, this thing about it being your passion is interesting to me because the story is, if I have this correctly, you're a financial analyst, you're doing pretty well in that gig, and you yeah. give that up, you say, to pursue your dream, and your dream isn't um, becoming a rock star or, <laughs> or a superstar athlete, it's to, it's to help folks with English, that's your dream? Yeah, it's like, you know, being uh, on platform and, you know, creating content is my passion. I don't like sitting behind a desk using a lot of softwares like Excel and to work with you know laptops. This is not my thing. This is not like what I am passionate about. I love having interactions with people, getting that interactions from people, you know, this is very rewarding for me. But um, at the same time, I didn't have this privilege to have Instagram back then, but then Instagram gave this opportunity to me to have a platform for myself and I could, you know, start my, um, you know, Instagram page. Well, your, your platform in Iran was was a, a classroom like you were a, you taught English, right? 
Yeah, I taught English like traditionally in classes in a lot of institutes and I got that energy and I knew how it feels like when you are in interactions with people in a group and uh, people, you know, learn something from you and how satisfying and rewarding that feeling is that I couldn't get it from my corporate job. So, uh, you know, I really wanted to escape that job and to quit the job. And um, I'm really happy with my decision. How did you, I mean, you, it's hard to believe that you only left Iran a year and a half ago. You're, you're kind of a newcomer, right, to the West. How, yeah. how did you get so good at English while you were living in Iran? Uh, you know what? I am so passionate about English, and I have always been. So I try to keep myself updated and to speak to myself, speak to people. And, you know, I tried my best to boost that knowledge and to try to have that skills to to talk to people and not to be shy, to read in English. And I remember myself, I was driving from, you know, from one highway to another highway, talking to myself behind the wheels. So people would see me and would think that I'm crazy, I'm talking to myself. But I was, you know, I was preparing myself for an interview like today. I was like, I know one day I'm gonna be on a show I'm going to be interviewed by someone, and this is the thing that I'm going to say. So wow! So you're you're, you're, today. you're you're driving you're driving from one town to another in Iran, and you're muttering to yourself in English. Yeah, definitely. Right. <laughs> I, I love- was yeah, I was listening to a podcast, and then I tried to summarize that podcast into English, and uh, I enjoyed talking to myself in English. Whatever the topic was, I tried to talk to myself and uh, I also try to talk to anyone that could understand English I try to make friends internationally through you know platforms and um, I really uh, you know get opportunity to talk to people whatever I can can I I'm just out of curiosity and parenthetically why why did English capture your imagination so much I mean is it related to pop culture was it some your favorite actor or something spoke English I mean, yeah, what, what? you know my favorite actors my favorite singers and you know English is spoken widely so everybody can understand can speak so uh, I I love Backstreet Boys, I love Britney Spears, I love Jennifer Lopez, oh my god, I was a huge fan of J-Lo. So um, I got to listen to her song and I remember writing the lyrics, uh, every single words of it, and I tried to, you know, sing along and um, I, I read a lot of books in English, listened to a lot of songs in English, so English was like my second identity. So I really enjoy having a second identity and also a secretive language that nobody could understand. I could write in English in my diary. My mom wouldn't know mm-hmm. about those words and those uh, things. So it was you know, quite a lot of fun, right? Your parents don't speak English? No, they don't speak English, but uh, you know, they actually they um, registered me into English classes. So I'm thankful for them that uh, they sign up English classes for me. They told me, you know what, you have to go to English school. You have to improve your English. This is obligatory. There is nothing to negotiate with. And I was like, I don't want to learn English. They were like, no, 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 you gotta do this. And I was like, okay. Do they still not speak English? Because apparently there's folks online who teach it. Uh (laughs) Yeah, now they're saying that uh, we are learning from you. Okay, so. (laughs) Um, You know, it's one thing to teach to that you talked about the energy a few moments ago that you would get as a teacher teaching folks in the room and you're teaching English. I've got to think it's that's one thing that and that energy has to be different when you're basically teaching into a camera, your iPhone or or a professional camera or however you do your right. your shows. Uh, um, tell me about that. Was that an adjustment and how did the idea for your channel first come up? You know, th- there are a lot of people on Instagram, but I really want to be inspiring and also a person that learns teach something to people i want people to learn something from me right so i don't like to waste their time i think english is very important for every individual and everyone should learn english Uh, So I was like, you know, I I should teach it to people on my platform and it's accessible for everyone. 
everyone can see it. And, you know, when I see the feedback and how people re- uh, love this, uh, you know, the clips, the videos, I get that energy back and I can make another one. Um, how, how did you first decide? I'm gonna, I want to break down and ask you about um, the material, the, 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 the ideas that you have yeah. uh, behind the way you teach and then right. what, what, what yeah. you've learned about who the audience is, and um, uh, which is kind of the, the subtext of this, this episode where we're you know, figuring out who wants to learn English and the whole culture around it currently uh, around the world because it's clearly very popular, this what you're doing. Um, what was the first step in terms of deciding what yeah. kind of material you want to post on sure. your channel? Yes, uh, you know when I was started my channel, uh, there were some people who have already been working in this industry and in this field. So I went through all those pages and I was like, you know what? They, they were teaching mostly about some expressions and idioms, which to me is not that much practical as it is the basics. And people ha- still have problems with their basic English. So and um, they were like, you know, you can learn English in 10 days. I have a package that is magical. And you don't need to learn any words, any grammar. Just buy this package and boom, you're done. And I was like, these are not real. You know, these are just, uh, I don't know, illusions. And you got to be real. And I was on my platform and I... I was the first one who said, you know what, if you want to learn English, it takes a lot of time and it doesn't happen just by buying a package, by watching a video and you got to put your life into this journey. And I try to be honest and to see that what the journey is all about. And also I try to teach some basics, some especially pronunciation mistakes that people have because we learn English from school and our English school back then (laughs) were, you know, like they would pronounce the words like uh, breakfast, (laughs) boy, bout, being bedout. And I was like, really? And um, so I had to correct those mistakes. First, I started with uh, the pronunciation correction and then I went through some motivational content, how to keep motivated throughout your journey because it's a long journey and there is no particular destination at the end of the road. And um, I think people love that, um, you know, honest and true content. Well, it's the content is interesting to me because I mean, one of the things I like about it is it's like a variety show. You're, it doesn't feel like you're working chronologically through a textbook. Um, each day, it's it's something different. But then I wonder um, how you come up with these things. I mean, they, some of them seem kind of random. Like a few days ago, you posted a video teaching people the names of fitness equipment in a gym. So yeah. this is a kettlebell. This is a fitness ball. These are weights. Uh, h- how do you decide that people want to know that? That's it. I mean, you cannot learn English through the textbooks, right? English is something that you get to see in your everyday life, right? So um, when you see like this is, what does it call in English? And what is it in English? Uh, How do we say this in English? It becomes more practical. But in a textbook, you just have to memorize something which you might find not practical. Since I moved to Canada, I found it more practical to you know, to teach how to say these, they are so simple, yet difficult to say. You're teaching the vernacular in some ways. You're teaching street language almost right, to a certain right. extent. And also, um, sometimes, you know, there is no like, this is the first lesson and second lesson. English is like, you got to learn a lot of things. Today, I teach something uh, based on a magazine article. It, the other one is going to be based on an interview with Jimmy Fallon. So it's not, there is no particular rules. Right. Uh, you got to learn it, you got to, you know, enjoy the journey. And the journey can come with a song, with a video, with an article, whatever. I mean, your your most popular post, I scrolled through and, and just <laughs> look at the, the, looked at the numbers. Your most popular post on your Instagram involves you quickly rhyming off some um, basic slash cool phrases in the English vernacular, like it's on me or hit me up yeah. or give me a break. Oh. Why, why do you think, for example, that post is so popular? I don't know. People love 
idioms and expressions. Um, you know, having said that, I always say like, it, these are not the most important part of a language and yet people love it and people, you know, um, are looking for that kind of content and I have to feed them, right? So sometimes you got to go with the mainstream. Sometimes you got to go with your, you know, what you think is correct and is true, but people love uh, the, some, some small, you know, idioms, expressions, because they think that this is not what people say. People always use the idioms, expressions. Right, and right, they, right. But you're, you do it pretty quickly. Like, for example, in that video, you're going, uh, it's on me. Hit me up. Give me a break. And, yeah. and I'm thinking, how does, do people actually, you know, what do they do? Do they pause the video and practice that? I mean, <laughs> No, because, you know, uh, I think it was about three months ago. So it was that feature was for 15 seconds. Ah. And these days, because of TikTok, uh, TikTok, people cannot listen to a video more than 15 seconds, honestly. <laughs> I should get it done like in 10 seconds. Right. It's very difficult for me. I have to have a lot of preparation for that. But this is, unfortunately, this is how it is. And I, if I sit for one hour talking about something, they're like, oh, we're done. We're going to watch it later. And right. they never watch it. I love right? that even teaching a language now has to be done in 15 second increments. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know. And you know what? The, uh, other, the, uh, another thing about instagram and social media teaching is that when you are scrolling down on instagram you feel that you are learning the language or you are learning something but in fact you are just consuming a content and you, it's just content consumption and it's not learning you have to put it into practice like you have to save yourself but then you're like okay let's scroll down 15 seconds 15 seconds and then it's not learning you know, it's funny you should say that because I was thinking about this. I know uh, uh, a Persian uh, Instagram influencer person who does who really doesn't speak English well. And I was thinking about that person and thinking about how, how much time they spend on Instagram and following a lot of non-Persians too. And I was wondering why it doesn't translate into learning English. It's interesting that you should bring this up. Yeah. Are you suggesting that you actually have to actively be thinking about learning even, even when you're seeing English go by? Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, there are some cons, but if it's 15 seconds, you got to practice at least 15 minutes of it. Like you have to go through it, write down every phrases that I said in a video and then practice it, repeat it. And it takes a lot of time from the audience, right? For me, it's just 15 seconds, but for the audience, for the learners, it's got to be something more than that. And it's not like, because sometimes we're going to, you know, fool ourselves and say, okay, no, we are on Instagram only for learning something and we're just scrolling down constantly and we are going through, you know, never ending streams of contents, but it's not learning. Learning is done through uh, practicing, through writing, through putting into practice. And it's not just by scrolling down. You, you tend to focus on grammar and mistakes that can be made sometimes. Like you correct the fact that Persians tend to say, I have 33 years rather than <laughs> I am 33 years old. Yeah. Tell me about how you choose what grammatical lessons yeah. you teach and give, uh, yeah. give, give us some examples. From, like it is worth $100, but in Farsi we say it has worth <laughs> or it doesn't have worth. But worth in English comes with am, is, or was, were, but in, English, but in Farsi it comes with have or has. Right. So you, you got to translate it from Farsi into English or, or also it comes opposite. Like if you say I avoid talking to him in Farsi, if you translate it, it becomes so like formal. <laughs> People won't say it, but in English they say it. Like, what, what's I, the Farsi of I, I avoid talking to him? It's tenop. It's tenop mikonam as half said. It's too much. And, okay. yeah. yeah, too much. But in English it's so common, right? Huh. And they they just say, no, Sherry, we just need some, uh, you know, uh, everyday talk. Everyday talk. And I'm saying, you know what? Everyday talk in Farsi is totally different from everyday talk in English. And this is something like people say, and you don't get to choose what people would say. You gotta learn English in general, right? And um, it's not like, okay, this part of it, I just need this part of a language. I don't need this part of a language. It comes with a package. So it's all in the package. You gotta learn it. 
Yeah, it's sometimes every once in a while, uh, somebody that I, I completely won't know will will. Uh, I mean, forget me, because maybe they think they're familiar because of the program or something. But they'll use, for example, um, to a stranger, they'll say, "Thank you, dearest one," you know. And and I and I sort of said, "We don't really do that in English. That's like a yeah. <laughs> that's right, a right. Persian thing yeah. you're translating, yeah. but we don't run exactly. walk around saying dearest one to strangers, you know." <laughs> yeah, or, or sometimes when they are. They want to introduce themselves. They're like, thanks for giving me this opportunity to be this on cloud. Because, you know, in Farsi, we try to uh, have a very long introduction <laughs> and you don't want to get it to the point. But I'm like, you know what, just get to the point. Uh, you know, cut all those right. and Long goodbyes, like, long, long goodbyes as well. <laughs> you have to do this whole long thing. And it's like, can we just try to say, I, 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 I'm just going to the bathroom. I mean, it, 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you, uh, Shahzad Sherry, are you? You are very present in all of your content in all of your vid- videos. Uh, um, tell me about the decision to put yourself front and center, as opposed to using graphics or text or animation or other teaching tools. I love being in front of a camera. You know, I, I'm not shy at all. I'm very an extrovert, if you call that. And I love sitting in front of a camera. It's my thing. So um, as long as I have the time and um, the content, I love sitting in front of a camera, I'll record myself and put it on my socials. So, uh, and also I think a graphic doesn't give the message, doesn't convey the message. But I myself, people have that interactions through the faces. Right. But how do you how do you know people are tuning in for to learn English and not just tuning in because oh my god I like her style or I think she's they, pretty They or- do. They definitely do. You know, for my video, I got to be ready in terms of like the outfit, hair, everything because it comes again with a package. So, uh, people just don't follow you because of your like English or something. They follow you because you, they think you're like uh, stylish mm-hmm. uh, I mean effortless not like you put a lot of effort into your style but just you're um, you know you're, you they like your style they like how you speak they like how you talk so it just um, I think it's just a whole package that people follow anyone but you it's don't you just- don't worry sorry to cut you off but it, it don't don't you do you not worry that I mean I, I don't mean to be old school about this or something but that that is undermining the point then I mean if they're tuning in this because is social media I know what you mean and sometimes especially on YouTube, you got to have some more pranks or something that is not me totally, but this is how people like to see from you, right? And also, I myself, as an audience, I see a lot of models, but I don't appreciate them because they're just models. They just pose in front of a camera. But if a person has a good career plus stylish, that's something that sticks to my mind. And I'm like, oh, I want to be that person. So if, so, if, so, if someone follows you because they like your hair, you don't mind that? No, I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why would, I, think, I, I don't is, know. This I just, is media, you know? <laughs> and I think people follow you because of your voice, because how you can talk and uh, you have a mellifluous voice. It's so soothing. People like your voice. So this is the people compliment you, right? right? So right. you should be... You should be happy about that. Right. right. You're saying they don't follow me because of my looks. <laughs> That's what you're really saying. I appreciate that. <laughs> your looks plus your voice. <laughs> what is that? What is the, tell me what, what is the greatest challenge you've encountered in teaching English? People uh, want to only follow some, something that it's not very essential for them. Like, as I told you about idioms, expressions, where they need to put a lot of time into their, like, grammar, vocabulary, pronunciation that is more essential for them. But um, th- through Instagram, they just want to, you know, see something very quick. And uh, they don't want to sit down, discipline themselves, and study. It, study is very difficult, especially, you know, after Instagram, TikTok. You you're constantly want to be on your phone. You don't want to put away and start studying. Uh, and it's, it's very challenging. As Farsi-speaking people, as per, if, when, when Persian is uh, your first language, um, 
is there are there particular pronunciation issues when it comes to the English yes. language? Definitely. Actually, alphabet is totally different from English alphabet and to Farsi. Like R in English is totally different from re in Farsi. So you would say like car, but in Farsi you say I have a car, <laughs> teacher. So, but it's not uh, it's not the uh, English R. English R is totally different. so. If I say let's practice alphabet, they're like Sherry. We don't want to learn alphabet. We are so advanced. We are an advanced student. And I'm like, you know, it's not about your placement test. It's just, you know, alphabet is totally different. And we have never learned that. So let's learn it today, right? And um, so alphabet is totally different, like TH sound. Uh, there, It's not in Farsi. And, uh, you know, people say, Sherry, if I say birthday, people would, would laugh at me. If I say 13, they People would laugh at me. Like, it's, who, who would laugh at you? It's how it's pronounced. And, um, or if W, it's like Windows. We don't have W in, right, in Farsi. Right, 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 right. right? That's a famous one, and yeah. That's a famous one. And also uh, the K sound is also um, different. Like uh, Vancouver in Farsi, they say Vancouver or Vancouver. Or, but in English, it's like Vancouver. It's like interesting. Vancouver, right? So it's totally different, and it's very challenging for Persian-speaking, you know, people. And um, but I have to dig in and say, like, uh, this is totally different. Pronunciation is different, and uh, you know, knowing words, knowing a lot of words, because Persians know a lot of words. They know the translation and they work on translation a lot, right? So uh, translation is not learning. Translation is just translation. And sometimes like the word complacency. So the word, com it's very difficult to translate it into Farsi. We don't have the, the correct mm. translation or maybe it's just a translation but it's not the concept mm. so when i want to teach like the word complacent or complacency i have to give a lot of examples in the context and say that like a person that doesn't want to try and uh, becomes to the phase that we call that person is complacent uh, and i have to you know give more examples because you don't have the exact translation for each word you know, this, this program is almost entirely in English. I mean, we'll throw in some Persian words once in a while, and there's the there's the there's some exceptional, you know, cases in interviews where Batman Qobadi or uh, Rastok that we did them in Persian, but or Fariz Olon. But for the most part, this is all in English. Um, about 35% of our audience now is in Iran, in the big cities yeah. we hear, you know, in Tehran, Shiraz. Uh, so in other words, they're listening and they're they're on the podcast platforms as well as Instagram and stuff. So so they're listening uh, yeah. to a program that's in English, um, which when I started this, when we were starting Rook, uh, there were people who would not believe that, that, that there would even be interest outside of Iran, let alone in Iran, to hear something that speaks to Persians in, in English. Does it surprise you that there's the, that high a number of people in Iran listening to an English program? No, it didn't take me by surprise because I know people love learning English and also they want to find the same culture. So there are a lot of podcasts out there, you know, but when they see a person, a Persian person is talking in English, they're like, I can look up to them and uh, it's going to be like a journey for myself and I can envision myself to be that person. So they find this common place that, okay, um, you know, I, I, we have the same culture, we have the same background. So if that person could speak English, I can do the same. Mm. And it's going to be like an inspiration for them. And also the topic that you're talking about is very kind of, you know, very common and very well known to us. We are not that strange, but if, I don't know, if Logan Paul is 
um, having a show with another guy that they don't know about. So they don't they don't find any interest I see. in following and uh, listening and to the podcast. But culture is very important. I always recommend your show to my learners that you can you know when you're driving you can listen to your show and um, instead of listening to Sassi Mankan, it's better to listen to your show. Those are the two and, options. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are the two options. <laughs> and have, because you know what? This is how you improve your English. Right. If you say, okay, let's listen to Sassi Mankan, let's watch Farsi movie, let's talk to Farsi people. You cannot improve. So this is how you improve your well, English. Well, I want to get to that. But let me just I would ask you what you've learned about who your audience is. What do your channel and Analytics tell you about who's using your platform? Yeah, mainly people from Iran. I mean, they live in Iran. Also, people who live in Canada, Vancouver, Toronto. Are they young, old, men, women? Who are uh, they? No, it's it, they're, they're mostly um, young. I would say between twenty-five to thirty-five. But also, I have you know uh, older audience as well. How do you navigate trying to teach? A, a group of an amorphous group of people out there and the hundreds of thousands who are following you who undoubtedly must be at different levels of yeah, English right. competence. So there's going to be someone who watches a post of yours obviously and goes, well, I know that phrase. That's easy to me. And somebody else who's just learning it and you can't sort of separate them into different grade levels. So how, how do you navigate what you what what level of, of teaching you're going to exactly. do that's that's the main challenge and everybody's like this is so easy or this is so difficult so i get these two um different and contrasting ideas from my audience but you know what english is not about level and there is no like certain level that this word is for elementary students this word is for advanced learners it, the words are the words, the grammars, everybody should learn it. But, you know, and mostly if you say I am advanced, you, you don't know a lot of basic things still. Right, right. Sometimes people say, like, I've got eight on IELTS speaking parts. But if I see someone in an ele elevator, I don't know how to start up a conversation. Hmm. And I don't know what to say if I'm waiting for something and the other person is talking to me. What should I say? Or how should I say, like, uh, I need this, I need that. It's, very, you know, conversational skills are very important and yet difficult. I actually, I relate to that because even with my Persian sometimes where I, I understand it and I I I can speak relatively okay in a formal sense. You know, it was interesting because just today I was in a little um, Persian store, you know, a khuraki, like a place where they're selling stuff. And, uh, you know, and because I start by speaking Persian, they think, well, you know, this guy's, <laughs> you could say anything to him in Farsi. And I, and it's the conversational part. Like there's these pauses where I feel like I can't, I don't have a, a personality, yeah. you know, because I'm not, I, I'm the, my conversation yeah. without including oh. some English words. So I completely empathize with those who are on the other side who, who exactly. are kind of that trying happens to into English. And uh, that part, because, you know, when you move to another country, you're about 25, 26, you don't have time to make a lot of friends. And uh, because, you know, most of that conversation is coming from your childhood. You make friends in your daycare or you go to school, you, you get to see a lot of cartoons or that kind of things. But when you uh, move uh, to another country, you're mostly 25, 26. You don't have, not the time, nor the energy, right? Okay, well, that's that's actually a perfect segue because I wanted to throw something at you in, in terms of uh, this this question that I, I, I is at the heart of um, a lot of my thinking around this, this uh, learning English and where we're at as a community globally, you know, your popularity is a testament to the fact that there's people out there, Iranians in Iran, outside of Iran, who want to learn English. And yet there seems to be a paradox at work, Sherry, with, with Iranians outside of Iran in that 
as the communities in the diaspora have grown, there are increasingly places, and I'm thinking about the northern part of Toronto, you know, in which the Iranian community is so large and widespread that new immigrants from Iran don't actually have any incentive to learn English. You know, there'll be people walking around in their 30s who've been here for a few years and don't speak English at all. You know, what is your what is your take on that? I would say it's beneficial for people who are like in their 40s, 50s, because it's very difficult for them to learn a language. And it's very good. And it's the privilege that uh, there are a lot of Persians here, right? Hmm. But also, Th- those, those, those old people in their 40s. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> 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 no, the, the, know, the seniors <laughs> yeah the seniors thank you yes keep no, going honestly for, <laughs> honestly for learning a language is very challenging you know for learning language other than that you're good but if you're in your 20s you might uh, fall into the trap that of you know being in this community you find persian friends uh, Persian boyfriend or Persian, um, you know, everything Persian. And you don't have the chance of finding a, you know, finding a friend, right. making the conversation. And it becomes harder and harder in the, you know, later stages of your life. And I think people, you know, should, should actively av- not avoid it, but try to find a way to integrate and try to find a way to you know make friends and it's going to be easier for them in their later stages if they want to get into a job interview or having a better job position yeah. because they need to have better english yeah so it, it's going to be I, I think i think it's i mean i think it's well a hundred percent it's going to benefit you in every way to learn english uh whether you live in canada or not but certainly if you are here um and but uh, it's definitely this question of it's it's a comfort zone right it's it, yeah. I see people coming here, especially if they're working at a place where they can just speak Persian at, at work. So they, it's kind of what's their incentive? You know, I'm, I'm tired. What yeah. I don't. And mm-hmm. you know, when there are exceptions, I mean, we have this um, person working with us now that I've mentioned on the show a few times, Paris Saw, who just came from Mashhad three or four months ago, and she goes out of her way. I mean, she makes it a mission to have non-Persian friends uh, because she knows that she can easily slip, especially in somewhere like Toronto to slip into just being completely and working on a program like this and just completely surrounded by Persians. So she doesn't, she won't have any incentive to learn. And I think that's a, a great, um, uh, I'm, I'm impressed that she's going that extra step to make sure yeah. that, uh, because, you know, if you do really integrate into the community, it's not that hard to pick up the language over a short period exactly. of time, right? Exactly. And, you know, getting out of that comfort zone is very difficult and challenging. But once you get out of that comfort zone you find it that it wasn't that big of a deal that i would think it would be and you know you kind of eat that frog and uh you don't feel like um you, you you're you're not capable of making any conversations because you have to practice it you make mistakes definitely for sure but you're gonna learn from your mistakes and um, this is this happens in, in english that you 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 always make mistakes but mistakes are there to be made. And once you make mistakes, you'll learn from your mistakes and you move on and you're going to be better and you're going to be more fluent. But if you stop trying, you never have the chance to give it a shot, give it a try. And uh, you're, not, you're, not, you're not going to get, get there, never. Tell me what this is about for you now. I mean, you it's got to be consuming a lot of your time. You've got the Instagram channel. You've got the YouTube channel. You do a podcast. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, is by the way, is this? do you make a living from this now, just just from your yes. online presence? Yeah, I'm, I make a living uh, by teaching English. I run classes, and um, this is what I like and I'm passionate about. So I think a job should be something that you're passionate about, that when you get up in the morning, every day that I get up, I'm like, Oh my God, I have classes. I'm so happy. Once I start the Zoom meeting, I'm the happiest girl in the world because I have that one-on-one interactions with people. And when my learners tell me, Sherry, you changed my life. I got this job. I am very confident in English. It's the greatest thing for me. So, um, and I've got to imagine you're, you're, you, because of your popularity on, say, Instagram, you get a lot of students that way, huh? 
and yeah, but I, I try to, to stay humble and modest and down to earth. So yes, but yeah, uh, I, I get um, a lot of students and uh, they, you know, when, um, you know, they, they say that before your classes, we were like, you know, we, we were like, we are not good in English, but then you, you, you taught us how to be more confident, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And it's very rewarding for me and I really like it. And so I think this, the, the job is something that makes you happy. What's your relationship to other people who are doing this kind of work? I mean, you must be aware that there are hundreds of others doing online English teaching in various different kinds of ways. We just had Husheng Academy on. He's somebody who's doing that from the, the States. Does it feel competitive? Do you guys sort of watch each other and, and wonder? Definitely we stalk each other for sure. But uh, the thing is, it's very good and great. And I'm so happy that there are a lot of people teaching English on Instagram because I don't want Instagram or any social platform to be a place where people only pose in front of a camera about their bags, shoes, style, and all that kind of content. It's going to be more informative. And nothing is more informative than English. Um, but people have different styles, right? So one person might find another way of teaching more um, you know um, uh, more interactive or more effective okay that's fine but we don't compete a lot on instagram everyone has their own style and they, they're gonna have the we, we compete over the followers for sure everyone wants to have more followers and that kind of stuff but nobody you know there is not a lot of competition on instagram that we're going to uh i don't know get on to Instagram story and say this person is saying this wrongly I am right we don't have that kind of things hopefully um you, you just do that privately <laughs> not not not, not. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. It's, right. I was I was going to actually ask you who you don't think is doing a good job, but you probably won't answer that. Let me turn it around and who who else does a version of what you do that name somebody or, or some that that you think does a really good job of this. You know, sometimes when you go around some Instagram stories, you might get some ideas and you might fall into the trap of copying someone. Right. right. So I don't go over right. that. You know, so, wanna, yeah, you know, steal yeah, the lyrics. You have to steal the lyrics right. from the other songwriter. Yeah. yeah. So I, I try not to, but sometimes, like, I want to see the market. I want to see how other people are doing. But uh, I follow mostly, um, you know, not Persian um, t Instagram teachers. Uh, so there is one girl, she is Russian, and she is, she's living in uh, California. And uh, she, that, that's my inspiration, you know what? Because uh, she has 4.4 million followers on, on YouTube. And yet she has lots of mistakes in English. Like <laughs> on video, you know, on video you can uh, edit some parts. Sure. But she doesn't edit, I mean, Come on, you can go over and see like you pronounce it <laughs> wrongly or you pronounce it like it's not correct. Right. But I mean, you know what? I, I was like, she has four million followers <laughs> right. and yet she has mistakes. So I was like, I'm so good. <laughs> I was like, I shouldn't be always say like I should be correct all the time. I can make mistakes because it's not my first language. It's not my mother tongue. So uh, I deserve to make mistakes, right? I'm entitled to, to have those mistakes. And when I see her, but also she is very inspiring. She gets up every day with new ideas. She records a lot of videos. She has ideas for a lot of for videos. And I, I, it's very inspiring because sometimes like I'm in the bed and when I open uh, the Instagram and I see uh, she, how productive she is, I get off the bed and I try <laughs> to make some videos. And I'm like, so it's it's a good competition for me. Right. And um, yeah. Um, you're. I mean, you don't. You don't sound like you lack for ambition. By the way, I just love so much that you're so passionate about this like i mean you're you're obviously somebody who likes being on camera as you said and like you see you're comfortable with social media instagram all of that but you're you're also doing something in terms of the teaching that is um is not just a, a device for popularity or clicks on on social media but it's something you're passionate about and you love and that it's so it's really lovely I, how would you like to build this further? I mean, what's the, is, I guess it's the 4.5 million. You want to be the Russian girl in California. Is that the, is that the peak of, I mean, where, where, where do you, where do you want to take this next? 
I don't know. I mean, um, I really like to have more popularity or more followers, more audience, especially on YouTube, because YouTube is very good. But people in Iran, because of VPN, they don't uh, like to turn on the VPN and go to YouTube. And they're so sluggish in terms of uh, watching YouTube videos. So uh, I have that challenge. But also for the next step, I, I, I don't have like a very clear idea that um, what the next step with me. But if you have any suggestions, if you're, you're watching me, uh, comment down below and let me know if you need anything from me. I mean, if you think I could be any of help, I would be happy. <laughs> <laughs> you're always working the crowd. I love it. I love it. You know, I, I, I think you do a great job. Yeah. And, I, and, uh, I, and but wait, I like the podcast. I like podcasts. I you like doing this is podcast. my Yes, that's my... Um, like lifelong dream that to have a podcast and to have a show like you. So I'm kind of envious. Well, it's uh, you, you're already doing it. I mean, what do you need a show, show like me? Um, it is such a it's such a pleasure to talk to you. Thanks for taking the time. Uh, thanks for sharing the insights that uh, that you've learned, and um, uh, we'll keep following you. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you so much. Pleasure is mine. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Bye bye. That is the ESL teacher, tutor, creator of the Instagram channel, Learning English with Sherry Shahzad, Sherry Kazemi. Shahzad joined us from Vancouver, Canada today. Right, microphone's Love back that. on <laughs> for uh, Captain Reza, Groovy Shia, and the fabulous Keon. Thank you so much again to Husheng Nur Mohammadi and Shahzad Sherry Kazemi. Uh, how about that? You know, uh, maybe I'll lead off by yeah. saying I thought uh, I I'm so happily impressed by how passionate mm. they both are about this. Mm. That when when Sherry says it was my, it's her dream to teach English. You know, I mean, it's 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 amazing. That's that's what you want in a teacher. You know, it's somebody who's that, and you can tell who Shang is so invested in that, mm -hmm. and so invested in helping folks and folks who otherwise couldn't get lessons, couldn't afford it. Well, it's a very be beautiful thing. Very, very. And uh, for me, it was with Hu Shang's story. It's just kind of reminded me of how good we got it nowadays to be perfectly honest though as an as immigrants even though we think that oh nowadays like the image of iranians and middle easterns is like it's it, it equates to terrorism and stuff whereas uh I, I i don't think that's i think in the eyes of public um it's different it's there's a there is more information out there about who truly uh, Middle Easterns are and stuff. Whereas back in the day, like when hostage crisis happened, this guy was being deported back to Iran. And I'm sure that there's still a lot of racism and prejudice uh, out and about. But I feel like because of technology, because of people ha having more access to information, like, look, these guys have like students from Iran, right? Listening to, uh, um, uh, yeah. to their stuff. Yeah. Uh, I think there is more information. But about the technology all, uh, has also created more misinformation. That's true. You too. know, and uh, more sort of subcultures that that traffic in that uh, racism or white nationalism or whatever mm -hmm. those different forms of it. Then, but do than you think you, well. you? But you have more people on your side as opposed to like let's say back when you were in high school or whatever. Or it, it definitely for me. If you, you're right, if I if I had if there had been an online world where I could be finding other Iranian immigrants when I was a kid and there was nobody around that was Iranian, absolutely. Or other yeah. immigrants who would yeah. just back you up because simply they feel the same. They feel like they're on the same boat. Yeah. 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 So that was my takeaway, guys. Because of Hushang's story? <laughs> yeah, because yeah. of Hushang's story. And it's just generally thinking about how. Uh, I like how we've been doing this show for a year and a half. Uh, everyone's had a hard luck story. This is like Reza's just got it's just caught up to it now. He's like, hey, you know, <laughs> no, I was thinking about how no. hard it was for Hushang. No. To get, like we've 
had people who've been in prison yeah. for decades, yeah. and like but you know, <laughs> families have been killed, and you know, yeah. it's like the, the the episode about teaching English. But like, there is, I like realized that we actually funny. I, you made me think of something. Just uh, yesterday, in the New York Times, they uh, did a piece on Swissy Spandari. Can no. you believe it? Oh, in I the saw New York that. Times, yeah, did you see yeah. that? So you're kind of right. I mean, I'm today, like. You. Compared to what, when I was growing up, I told you guys the story how some girl uh, was like, so if you're Persian, are you like from Peru? You know, the, just the blatant <laughs> ignorance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure today that girl knows what, you know, being yeah. Persian I would have been is, like, so. yes, <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm from Peru. Please, <laughs> yeah. please believe that yeah. I'm from Peru. You are right. I used to pretend I was half Spanish. I mean, yeah. For me, it was like, they would be like, oh, Persian, is that like Paris? Like, yeah. are you French? And I'd be like, mm, There was so know, much shame associated would be, with yeah, it. Absolutely. And now it's, it's different now. And now right. with uh, this regime, there's no shame. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. <laughs> We, uh, there's pride. only pride for us uh, in the diaspora. Shai Jun, okay. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, Actually, it was interesting that uh, Hu Shang teaches uh, American history. It was really interesting. Uh, and he he's right that um, uh, knowing American history really helps these days of wars because we have to get united at some yeah, point just like you the know. guy on the stage who got united with <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so you're saying that knowing american history mm. uh, helps us unite iran no the whole war uh, ah yeah. i see and uh, knowing knowing yeah. about others right yeah. right knowing about the history of others yeah and not be racist uh, and you right. know right. accept all the, the sadly you know that most americans know more about their own history than the rest of the world yeah mm -hmm. and true. canadians know more about the rest of the world mm -hmm. uh as well as our canadian history that's i mean we say that with smug pride but it, it's the it's the reality yeah. uh a big thank you again to Kathy Cavendi and Kathy Cavendi Immigration Services for making this edition of Rook possible. This is a full-service immigration firm that offers all inland and overseas immigration services, including temporary visas, permanent visas, PR extensions, citizenship applications. Kathy and her team are available to inform and assist you as their client throughout the whole immigration process. If you want to come to Canada, uh, or you're here and you need support, you need an immigration ca counselor and Katy can be your person. Katy Kavandi Immigration Services. The Instagram page is immigration. What do you do now, Kia? When you uh, leave the studio. What do I do now? Yeah, yeah. Like in, in my life? Yeah, what are you uh, going to do? Well, I, I don't know. The world is my oyster now. I'm mm. free as a bird. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's raining, so. Yeah. Why, what do you do now? I listen back to the show, <laughs> and then uh, then I listen back to the show again, and then so you crawl you into a corner <laughs> and weep. <laughs> 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 no. I, uh, morbid uh, show, morbid show <laughs> today. That's right. <laughs> no, I'll listen back to the show, and then I'll prepare for tomorrow. Uh, a big interview tomorrow. Ooh. I'm looking forward to uh, Captain Reza. Yes, sir. Uh, see you in, in a minute outside of the studio <laughs> yes. as we edit the show and get your minutes. graphics ready. <laughs> and uh, Groovy Shaya. Yes. Uh, because I love it. <laughs> 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 it's a shorter way of saying that. Zendebashi or Satsal Zendebashi or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Right? So yeah, time is That's even longer. Long. Long. Yeah. <laughs> I hope your shadow is always Have a love. Long I long hope life. you yeah, I hope we are, we are, we are always in your shadow. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I hope you continue to block the sun for the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why well, somehow it doesn't have a negative connotation when Thank you, you very first. much everybody. This is full time for Rook for today. Remember, for all things Rook, we invite you to check out our website, rookmedia.com. That's it. That's the place. All the episodes, the Rook series, Contemporary History of Iran, all the different parts are there, as well as the other Rook series, like uh, Why Pink Floyd, for example, and the Pahlavi Dynasty. Thanks to the amazing team who put this show together, producer Susan, Ponta the Artist, the fabulous Keon, Super Parisaw, Savvy Roham, Ahai Merthod, Captain Reza and Groovy Shaya. Thank you to all of you out there who continue to support us and share our content. And please subscribe if you've not done so already on any or all of our platforms. We like it when you share. We like we love it when you subscribe. Find me on Instagram or on Facebook at Gian Gomeshi and 
मी जोरबाशी